हेलो फ्रेंड्स हाउ आर यू ऑल लेट एस कंटिन्यू इंटरनेशनल इकोनॉमिक पॉलिसी इन दिस पर्टिकुलर वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट अबाउट द वर्ल्ड ट्रेड ऑर्गेनाइजेशन डब्ल्यू टी ओ ओके सो टिल दिस पॉइंट वी हैव ऑलरेडी अंडरस्टूड व्हाट आर द डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ ट्रेड अग्रीमेंट्स राइट वेदर इट इज बायोलेट्रल मल्टीलैटरल लाइक आर सी पी एट्सेट्रा सो वी नो वॉट आर ट्रेड अग्रीमेंट्स बेसिकली ट्रेड अग्रीमेंट्स आर बिटवीन बिटवीन टू कंट्रीज और मैनी कंट्रीज to reduce right to reduce the trade barriers to reduce the trade barriers so countries enter into such agreements to reduce the trade barriers so that you know there is free trade and uh, but when it when it comes to trade agreements it is limited to that particular two countries or four countries or 10 countries where the agreement is there right world trade organization is an organization which was formed to kind of globalize free trade okay it was an idea uh, in which uh, you know people wanted that in the entire world no countries should be discriminated against and uh, you know every country should benefit from the free trade uh, the the rich countries the developed countries should not discriminate against the poor countries and developing countries so world trade organization was formed uh, you know with that intention so basically what is the purpose of world trade organization it is to facilitate international trade and also regulate it okay if any country is violating any of the norms so to put some international regulations on it it officially started on 1st january 1995 as a uh, you know outcome of the marrakesh agreement okay so marrakesh agreement uh if if this word comes to you in exam so immediately when you look at this word marrakesh agreement wto should come into your mind okay because sometimes in prelims exam such kind of questions are asked that uh, you know marrakesh agreement relates to which of the following so op in option there may be wto imf world bank etc right so that's why i'm giving you these names also marrakesh is a place in morocco okay morocco is an african country and marrakesh uh, is a city in morocco and uh, this agreement was signed in marrakesh city that's why it is known as marrakesh agreement and this agreement was between uh, you know among you know many countries uh, uh, you know that's why uh, and that is how it led to formation of world trade organization in marrakesh agreement basically it replaced the existing gatt so gatt was an outcome of the uh, you know 1944 bretton woods conference we have already seen this it was a general agreement on tariffs and trade general agreement on tariffs and trade we already know this so uh, as we know the purpose of gatt was to reduce the trade barriers reduce the trade barriers uh, trade barriers uh, for trade in goods right trade in goods was covered here but after you know so many rounds of negotiations once this gatt was signed a lot of negotiations were happening about Uh, you know so see it's not always that only in one time one go all the negotiations will happen and everything you know idealized world will be formed it doesn't happen like that once an agreement is signed countries keep on talking to each other they keep on negotiating they they sit every year every two years every six months and talk about the problems and also the new problems that are coming in the evolving world so that's why these are the living organisms such kind of agreements are the living organisms they have their own lives okay so they need continue evol continuous evolution continuous updation so gatt was also one such agreement and it led to multiple rounds of negotiations and in one of the final rounds of negotiations of gatt this it was agreed that wto will be formed and it will replace the gatt and it, you know more comprehensive more holistic agreement will come into force so wto replaced the gatt in 1995 we will look at the background uh, how it happened uh, in this video only so uh, wto has 164 members there are total 164 members out of this 160 are the un member states apart from that there is one european union so this is just uh, you know single united block because the european union is already uh, you know economic agreement it's an economic integration so basically in european union there it is it is a kind of economic and monetary union because they have the same currency they have the same monetary policy all the countries which are present in the european union so they have the uh, same currency and also there is a free movement of labor capital and you know uh, so that's why it is a kind of emu so since they have free trade between the you know between themselves only the citizenship differs rest all of the things are almost 
you know same there the policies etc fiscal policies may be different because the governments are different but monetary policy is same for the european union so as a as a as a when it comes to international trade european union is one block okay so that's why it is one member of the wto then hong kong uh, macau and taiwan these three are kind of you know uh, so china claims that these three are also uh, you know part of the you know major china the the greater china whatever they call it so uh, these three are not considered to be independent countries but you know they are independently part of uh, wto because they have their own trade policies and they have their own international trade so totally there are 164 countries india is also a member of wto right from the beginning as you know we uh, we were a member of gat and then we continue to be a part of wto headquarter of uh, wto is in geneva switzerland okay so geneva is a very beautiful city in switzerland and uh, the headquarter of wto is in geneva now wto uh, agreement consists of agreements and you know negotiations uh, for dealing with trade in goods services also intellectual property dispute resolution between the countries related to international trade so you know that has an agreement related to all these things so basically it's a very comprehensive uh, kind of agreement it's a very comprehensive agreement okay so because it it covers so many different topics we will look at them uh, individually uh, you know about what is there for intellectual property uh, dispute resolution and also you know later on so many things were added but this was the original purpose when it was formed in 1995 now let us look at this structure and functioning first okay so how uh, you know the wto is structured uh, how the leadership is distributed so there is basically a ministerial conference okay uh, in the minist so ministerial conference is the highest decision making body so again it is a kind of parliament of wto so where uh, you know there is membership from all the countries and it meets every 2 years every 2 years once it sits and it takes decisions by consensus so whatever rounds of negotiations are happening and any decision has to be taken um, uh, you know uh, it is taken by the ministerial conference ki okay this is the agreement we have to this negotiations is happening this is the agenda and any decision has to be taken it will be taken by the mc the ministerial conference and decisions are taken here by consensus this is an important thing it is not taken by voting so in imf and world bank we saw that you know there was a voting percentage given to every country for example usa had a maximum voting percentage in imf right then followed by other countries so you know these country so in other bodies there was a voting percentage given to every country but here it's not like that it's by consensus consensus meaning every country um, has a say in it and even if one country uh, you know differs from the decision then that decision will not be considered to be taken okay so consensus meaning everybody should take the decision unanimously sabne milkar ha bolni chahiye to wo decision ko mana jayega so that is the meaning of consensus and ministerial conference appoints the director general the dg who is kind of the administrative head of the wto then the uh, next body is the general council so general council council it, it is a kind of the executive uh, body of the wto so this is a kind of the legislative body okay it takes decision on the laws by laws and decisions this is a kind of executive body so it handles day to day business of wto okay it also has representatives of all the members and two main functions that the general council does is that it does the trade policy review of the countries okay so it looks at the trade policy of different countries you know whether this country is doing any discriminatory policy against the other or what is happening so they do that and second one is dispute res uh, resolution dispute settlement okay so if there is any dispute between the two countries because you know countries will complain about each other that you know india has done this america says uh, india will say that you know america has this policy it is discriminatory against us so and so so there are dispute settlement bodies also in the general council of wto then there is a secretariat right so secretariat is a kind of council of ministers okay it is a kind of ministers okay uh, which looks after the uh, you know day to day uh, you know also look after the day to day work but they all they are the administrative head so of of the uh, you know entire wto so it has around 600 personnel it is led by the director general so director general is the head of secretariat he also has his four deputy director generals and it is to provide administrative professional and technical services okay so the work of this is to provide uh, all this support to uh, you know the ministerial conference and the general council 
now let us look at the uh, you know understand what are the functions of wto okay uh, in simple terms so what exactly wto does so the very basic function of wto is to reduce the barriers to trade right which was there in gat also so it is to reduce the barriers in trade both tariff and non tariff barriers this is important okay so both tariff and non tariff barriers should be reduced it should not be discriminatory that is the purpose of wto this is one second purpose is that the least developed countries ldcs least developed countries meaning extremely poor countries uh they have to benefit from the world trade okay because see these poor countries they don't have much infrastructure they don't have you know sufficient uh you know uh, uh, comparative advantage so some benefit should be given to them they should be allowed to you know give some kind of subsidies to their domestic industries and also they should be allowed to uh, you know have certain exemptions uh, so that is that is there so that least developed countries should be allowed to do that uh, so that they benefit from the world trade they also become a partner they also become a player in the world trade now the third is to make agreements to implement one and two okay so these two are the major objective now the wto has to make agreements for these two right so without any written agreement without any agreements any decision these two are simply empty talks right so we don't want empty talks we want agreements so agreements are done so that you know barriers to trade are reduced and least developed countries are benefiting from the world trade such kind of agreements will be done then the fourth next step is that dispute settlement if three is violated so if you know any agreement is violated there should be dispute settlement body also right so for example if uh, you know china violate certain uh, agreements then you know somebody can complain and the dispute settlement will take a decision so for dispute settlement also done by the wto and fifth one is cooperation with other right you know other goals of you know other bodies like sustainable development environmental goals etc so they also look into all that so these are the five main and very you know in very simple terms this is the objective of wto this is the function of wto now as i have told you that uh, uh, you know gat has replaced wto so before wto this gat which was a general agreement on tariffs and trade uh, you know certain negotiations was, were taking place in gat now how it used to happen we'll see so negotiations always happen in rounds so the uh, you know whenever negotiations happen we call them rounds so rounds of negotiation and one round can go for many years okay so it's not that you know one round for one year one round can go for many years basically round they have a specific agenda to discuss okay so uh, and, and you know they have to come up with an agreement on that so that is when the round gets concluded so for example if there is a round that we have to reduce the non tariff barriers okay non tariff barriers so this is the agenda of the round okay this is the agenda of the round so you know discussions will go on happening you know the ministerial conference will sit again and again every two years they will sit general council will uh, you know also uh, provide the support for this so rounds are taking place it can go on for 10 years 5 years 2 years you know 5 years we don't know so non tariff barriers is the agenda of this round and you know once we reach the agreement on that it, it the round is concluded so that is how it happens so negotiations always take place in rounds so before wto was formed in the uruguay round of gat so see wto was also a result of one of the rounds of gat okay so one of the specific agenda was there of gat and that round that round was known as uruguay round okay usually the rounds are named after the place or the country where the round has started okay where the first sitting of that agenda started so it was started in uruguay round of gat before wto was formed seven rounds of gat had taken place so what were the seven rounds briefly so before wto formed in 1995 uh, you know seven rounds took place so the first round uh, the first five rounds round 1 to 5 were from 1947 to 1960 see gat was formed in 1944 as part of bretton woods conference the first official round started in 1947 okay and you know five rounds took place in this 13 14 years and all the five rounds had the agenda of you know reducing the tariffs okay so these are the tariffs meaning uh, you know taxes or different kind of duties these were the five rounds we'll not go into detail of all that that is not required you just understand you know in the first five it took five rounds five agendas to reduce the taxes and duties of different kinds on uh, you know trade in goods okay it's all about trade in goods now we are talking about only trade in goods okay because we are still talking about the gat these are the rounds of gat now the sixth round 
the sixth round was from 1964 to 67 this is for you know maybe four years so it was the agenda was to reduce the anti-dumping duties okay it was on the anti-dumping agreement and this round was known as kennedy round okay this round was known as kennedy round then from 1973 to 79 see this six seven years that round was known as tokyo round because it's because you know the city tokyo is a city in japan and the agenda was that to reduce the non-tariff barriers okay ntps so now i hope you have understood what were the seven rounds of gat before the wto now after this seventh round in the eighth round you know that was known as the uruguay round it was it was started in 1986 and it concluded in 1994 okay so see 1986 to 94 about almost about 8 to 10 years this round uh, took place and uh, you know as a agreement as a final uh, you know treaty or you can say agreement or treaty of this round WTO was formed okay so Uruguay round was from 1986 to 1994 and it was the eighth round of GATT okay now it ex extended negotiations into new areas like services before this it was only goods but now you know the in the agenda they also put services they also put the intellectual property then reform trade reform the trade in sensitive areas like agriculture and textiles okay so these were the new points that were added and the final act after the final decision was taken in the uruguay round final agreement the final act was passed establishing wto okay so it established wto and it was signed the final act was signed on 15th april 1994 in the marrakesh morocco that is why it is known as marrakesh agreement the final act consists of about 60 agreements okay it has total 60 agreements which fall into the six main parts now the 60 agreements consist of agreements relating to the six categories so the first one is the agreement to establish wto okay all the countries agreed that you know we will establish a body called wto world trade organization which will look after all these things this will be the function of wto etc etc then multilateral agreement on trade in goods it it is known as the gat modified okay so the gat which was the original treaty it was still you know retained it was not that ki GATT ko pura utha ke fake diya. GATT was not thrown away. GATT was still there, but it was modified. Okay, it was modified. And then it was, it came to known as multilateral agreement on trade in goods. Okay, so it was about goods. Then general agreement on trade in services. Services is also involved. There is a special agreement for services now. It was known as GATS. General agreement on trade in services. Then agreement on trade related aspects of intellectual property rights. This was another agreement. It was related to intellectual property. We'll look at it, what it means. Then again, agreement on dispute settlement, how dispute settlement will take place, in what case, how it will be decided, right? Who can complain, how it can complain, everything was there. And also there was an agreement on reviews of government trade policies, how the government trade policies will be reviewed, right? What were the principles on which the government trade policies will be reviewed? We will continue WTO in the next video also because it's a very interesting topic, very important, right, for the world trade and also for our foreign trade policy. So we'll continue this in the next video. Thank you.